Well, our next big release of iOS is, you guessed it, iOS 12. Now, <laughs> iOS 12 will be available on all the same devices as iOS 11. We got together with some of the greatest minds in 3D at Pixar, and together we created a new file format for AR. It's called USDZ, and it's a compact single file format that's optimized for sharing while retaining great 3D graphics and even animations. Today, we are actually announce, announcing that we are gonna bring native USDZ support to Adobe's Creative Cloud. You will be able to bring in images, videos, text, any object from Creative Cloud directly into a native AR environment. In fact, for the first time with Creative Cloud and iOS, you will have a what you see is what you get editing in AR. It's pretty cool. So we're introducing a new app and it's called Measure. Tapping and dragging out a line like that. And check that out. It's a measurement. <laughs> ARKit 2 delivers advances with improved face tracking, more realistic rendering, and support for 3D object detection and persistence, which enables launching into AR experiences associated with a particular object or a physical space. But probably best is the support for shared experiences. Now this delivers true multi-user augmented reality. Over here. Very nice, I like it. How about taking, get to see inside our physical creations and check out all the details that were hidden before. Got a ballerina. With search suggestions. It'll highlight things for you like key moments and people that are important to you. Places where you've taken some great photos and even categories of photos like hiking and water sports. And search is much more powerful than ever. You can search for places by business name. We've added sharing suggestions. You'll see a suggestion like this to share those photos. If you tap in, you'll see that photos is even recommending a set of photos that, from that set that you might wanna share and suggest who you might wanna share them with based in part by the people that appeared in the photos. Now with shortcuts, any app can expose quick actions to Siri. Let's look at some examples. Now, say you have the Tile app because you're always losing your keys. Well, the Tile app can expose the option to add a shortcut to Siri. And you can assign your own phrase, such as, I lost my keys, would be a good choice. And when you then say it, Siri will automatically activate Tile and show you right in the Siri UI, start ringing your Tile just like that. So for instance, let's say you order a coffee every morning at Phil's before you go to work. Well now, Siri can suggest right on your lock screen that you do that, you tap on it, and you can place the order right from there. So with the Shortcuts app, you could do something like create a, a shortcut for surf time, and it could go get you the surf report, look up the current weather, get you the ETA to the beach, and even create a reminder for you to put on sunscreen when you get there. We've added a new sidebar, and it's a great way to navigate. It makes it easy, and I think fun, to dig into the areas you're most interested in. We're bringing Apple News to stocks. Apple Books has some great new features. For example, Reading Now, with a preview that makes it really easy for you to pick up reading right where you left off. CarPlay will also support third-party navigation apps. And so we're introducing Do Not Disturb During Bedtime, where all you'll see is this. In the morning when you wake up, you're gently eased into your day. You can tap when you want to start confronting those notifications. You can press in to a notification, and from there you can decide to send future notifications from that app directly to Notification Center, bypassing your lock screen, or turn them off altogether. And Siri will even help by suggesting that you turn off notifications for apps that you're no longer using. So I'm thrilled to announce that we're bringing to iOS support for grouped notifications. You get a weekly activity summary that details how you used your iPhone or iPad. You get a summary of the time you're spending in apps, how much time you're spending, how often per hour you're picking up your phone and what's drawing you in, and what apps are sending you the most notifications. App limits. Well, you can set your own limit. 
And then during the day, when you're using the app, you'll receive a helpful notification letting you know time is almost up. <laughs> and once you've re reached your limit, instead of the app, you'll see this. It's time to move on. But as a parent, you get one as well on your device. And based on what you see, you have the option of creating allowances. There's some apps you may want to always allow them to use. For instance, you may want them to be able to get at the phone at all, the t all times so they can contact you. Or you may want to give them access to educational apps. And you can also limit access to only movies, apps, and websites that you deem age appropriate. Tongue detection. <laughs> this. <laughs> New Animoji that I think you're all gonna love. Like ghost, koala, tiger, and T-Rex. <laughs> Memoji. There are so many hairstyles to choose from. And what's really amazing is as I'm making changes, the character up above is coming to life. Now that I have frames, I'm gonna tint my lenses to make a great pair of sunglasses. So I'm gonna set up my shot, snap, and send. Today, we're introducing group FaceTime. Three people, actually up to 32 simultaneous participants. Hey, everybody. Hey, 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 hey. Uh, hey Roberto, how's it going back there in Cupertino? I'd say it's going pretty well. And uh, Lauren, sorry for stealing your spotlight. <laughs> so in WatchOS 5, you can challenge any of your activity sharing friends to a seven day competition whenever you would like. And if they accept, you each try to win the week by closing your rings and earning points. You earn one point for each percent of a ring that you close. And while you're in the middle of a competition, your progress notifications are updated to not only show you the progress your friend's making, but also where you stand in the competition. The new workout type for yoga. Now we've also added a new workout type for hiking. This takes into account pace and heart rate and elevation gain, so you can more accurately get exercise credit while you're hiking in steep terrain. In addition to current and average pace, you now have the option to keep track of your rolling mile pace, which is how fast you ran the immediately preceding mile. You can also now set a custom pace alert, so your Apple Watch will tap you when you're above or below the pace that you've set. And finally, runners will now get cadence, so you can see your current steps per minute. We're adding automatic workout detection, introducing walkie-talkie. You just press to talk, and then your friend can hear your voice, just like a walkie-talkie so you no longer need to say, hey, Siri. You just raise your wrist and talk to Siri. With this notification from Qantas, you can check in and share your flight details right from the notification. After you finish a ride with Didi, you can scroll down, you can rate your ride and pay with Apple Pay right there in the notification. And with this one from Yelp, that your table is ready, if you need a bit more time, you can extend the reservation out a bit just by tapping here. The Apple Podcast app is coming to Apple Watch. Our next release of Mac OS is macOS Mojave dark mode. Just look at calendar and even mail. But I think one audience that's gonna especially appreciate dark mode are some of you here in this room are developers because Xcode looks fantastic in dark. We decided to add a new feature to Mojave that I think you'll, you'll enjoy. It's called dynamic desktop. And when you're using it, your desktop actually subtly changes throughout the day from morning to afternoon, to evening. Desktop stacks. And they can be arranged by kind, by date, or even by tag. So the image flies right into the right stack. But now we've added an all new view called gallery view. The updates will be available to our users this fall, and there will be developer betas for each of them after the keynote this morning. 